Chapter 46 Frank Frank unwrapped the firewood and knelt at the feet of Thanatos. He was aware of Percy standing over him, swinging his sword and yelling in defiance as the ghosts closed in. He heard the giant bellow and Aryan whinny angrily, but he didn't dare look. His hands were trembling. He held his piece of tinder next to the chains on Death's right leg. He thought about flames, and instantly the wood blazed. Horrible warmth spread through Frank's body. The icy metal began to melt, the flames so bright it was more blinding than the ice. Good, Thanato said. Very good, Frank Zang. Frank had heard about people's lives flashing before their eyes, but now he experienced it literally. He saw his mother the day she left for Afghanistan. She smiled and hugged him. He tried to breathe in her jasmine scent so he'd never forget it. I will always be proud of you, Frank, she said. Someday you'll travel even farther than I. You'll bring our family full circle. Years from now, our descendants will be telling stories about the hero Frank Zane. They're great, great, great. She poked him in the belly for old time's sake. It'd be the last time Frank smiled for months. He saw himself at the picnic bench in Moose Pass, watching the stars and the northern lights as Hazel snored softly beside him. Percy saying, Frank, you are a leader. We need you. He saw Percy disappearing into the muskeg, then Hazel diving after him. Frank remembered how alone he had felt, holding on to the bow, how utterly powerless. He had pleaded with the Olympian gods, even Mars, to help his friends, but he knew they were beyond the gods' reach. With a clank, the first chain broke. Quickly, Frank stabbed the firewood at the chain on Death's other leg. He risked a glance over his shoulder. Percy was fighting like a whirlwind. In fact, he was a whirlwind. A miniature hurricane of water and ice vapor churned around him as he waded through the enemies, knocking the Roman ghosts away, deflecting arrows and spears. Since when did he have all that power? He moved through the enemy lines, and even though he seemed to be leaving Frank undefended, the enemy was completely focused on Percy. Frank wasn't sure why. Then he saw Percy's goal. One of the black, vapory ghosts was wearing the lion-skin cape of a standard bear and holding a pole with a golden eagle, icicles frozen to its wings. The Legion's standard. Frank watched as Percy plowed through a line of legionnaires, scattering their shields with his personal cyclone. He knocked down a standard bearer and grabbed the eagle. You want it back? He shouted at the ghosts. Come and get it! He drew them away, and Frank couldn't help being awed by his bold strategy. As much as those shades wanted to keep Thanatos chained, they were Roman spirits. Their minds were fuzzy at best, like the ghost Franks had seen in Espido. They had remembered one thing clearly. They were supposed to protect the eagle. Still, Percy couldn't fight off that many enemies forever. Maintaining a storm like that had to be difficult. Despite the cold, his face was already beaded of sweat. Frank looked for Hazel. He couldn't see her or the giants. Watch your fire, boy, Death warned. You don't have any to waste. Frank cursed. He'd gotten so distracted, he hadn't noticed the second chain had melted. He moved his fire to the shackles on the god's right hand. The piece of tinder was almost half gone now. Frank started to shiver. More images flashed through his mind. He saw Mars sitting at his grandmother's bedside, looking at Frank with those nuclear explosion eyes. Your Juno's secret weapon. Have you figured out your gift yet? He heard his mother say, you can be anything. Then he saw grandmother's stern face, her skin as thin as rice paper, her white hair spread across her pillow. Yes, Fai Zhang. Your mother was not simply boosting your self-esteem. She was telling you the literal truth. He thought of a grizzly bear that his mother had intercepted at the edge of the woods. He thought about the large black birds circling over the flames of the family mansion. The third chain snapped. Frank thrust the tinder at the last shackle. His body was racked with pain. Yellow splotches danced in his eyes. He saw Percy at the end of Villa Prince Palace, holding off the army of ghosts. He'd overturned the chariot and destroyed several buildings. But every time he threw off a wave of attackers in his hurricane, the ghost simply got up and charged again. Every time Percy slashed one of them down with his sword, the ghost reformed immediately. Percy had backed up almost as far as he could go. Behind him was the side gate of the camp. About twenty feet beyond that, the edge of the glacier. As for Hazel, she and Alcolonius had managed to destroy most of the barracks in their battle. Now they were fighting in the wreckage of the main gate. Arian was playing a dangerous game of tag charging around the giant while Clinius swiped at him with his staff, knocking over walls and cleaving massive chasms in the ice. Only Arian's speed kept him alive.